When we look at the horse, we see a sentient being, pure muscle melded to bone in perfect symmetry, a body designed to run, to survive. Over the centuries, we have tamed this flight instinct and used the horse to carry soldiers into battle, till prairie soils, pull wagon trains, and provide horsepower for industry. Today, horses have a wide range of roles in society, from providing pleasure rides to competitive events, law enforcement to legs to take us into the wilderness. The horse-human partnership has influenced the course of history, and recently the horse has taken on a new role. Welcome to Equine Assisted Activities and Therapies, the fastest growing equine industry in the country, where the horse helps to heal our minds, strengthen our bodies, and invigorate our spirits. Children with physical disabilities have been therapized since they were little kids. Therapy can become repetitive. It can also potentially reinforce a sense of difference. I need special therapy, whereas my peers don't need this. Hippotherapy is a powerful intervention which is helping individuals achieve physical, sensory, and cognitive goals. But it's also helping to erase some of the social stigma for individuals with disabilities, providing a normalizing activity that their peers may not have the opportunity to do. With Emma um, riding Mirai and doing this hippotherapy and getting the core strength she needed to stand up on her own, it helped her take her first step. I think some of the most important research has been conducted by Dr. Tim Shirtleaf. He has done the most detailed work to date on validating that this three-dimensional movement of the horse, in fact, mimics human pelvic movement. Add to that that the child's around horses and is in a oftentimes beautiful space, has the benefits of more of a connection with, with nature, with the outdoors, with uh, simply being able to interact with an animal and therefore do better in the rest of their lives. We love Hearts and Horses because of everything that Emma has gotten out of this. When she first started here, uh, she could not hold herself up on the horse by herself. The three-dimensional movement of the horse is constantly challenging the balance and the stability in a very intense, highly repetitive manner. So if you can pay attention, catch and throw a ball in the hoop, go through a course while you're riding a horse, then you're going to be better able to do that when you're on the playground. Um, you're going to perhaps be better able to pay attention in the classroom, and on it goes. Mia was developing normally and meeting all of her milestones until around her first birthday, at which point she had a pretty severe regression, lost all the words that she had, um, and just kind of disappeared. Having autism, she struggles with language, she struggles with social connections, she struggles with a lot of sensory issues. She seeks a lot of sensory input, but also she experiences a lot of sensory overload. Anything from escalators to elevators to moving sidewalks, those were a no-go for me. <laughs> For individuals like Mia, a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder can present many challenges. However, experts are finding that therapeutic riding can have a profound impact on these individuals, generating a calming effect for them, which in turn can create a powerful learning environment. When I found out about the study with Children's Hospital, I thought it sounded like a great opportunity for Mia. Thankfully, she was selected for the control group, which gave her an opportunity to get comfortable at Hearts and Horses and then later be able to ride. Our research team embarked on this idea of therapeutic horseback riding when Children's Hospital received an NIH grant. After 10 weeks, the therapeutic riders had significant reductions, irritability, hyperactivity, spoke more words and more new words. The other finding that we had was significant improvements for the writers in social cognition, kind of social understanding, and social communication. Since Mia has been writing, we've seen a, a lot of difference in her. We've seen a decrease in tantrums and meltdowns and self-injury behaviors. She is going to speech therapy and occupational therapy after 
per uh, horseback riding lesson, and they have seen a huge decrease in her disruptive behaviors there. And it's been some of her strongest work there because she's able to relax and do the work. You know, Mia has learned how to follow multi-step directions because she's on the back of a horse. She has learned all of those things because it matters to her. As experts dive deeper into the positive effects of building a relationship with an animal, they're finding that horses can have a transformative effect on individuals who have experienced trauma. Researchers are finding that horses can enhance a feeling of well-being, decrease stress, and increase a sense of community for individuals which are all components necessary for leading a meaningful life. We've started to see tremendous potential for the use of horses in working with veterans. It comes through an understanding of the traumatized brain. So as somebody has been trained to cope or function in an environment that holds tremendous threat or risk, their brain is sensitized to being able to respond to those risks. And it makes perfect sense if you are operating in that environment. But what happens when those individuals come home and have a normal you know, interaction with their family? That brain is still oriented to and trained to respond to those risks or those forms of threats. I got PTSD from the stroke. After the stroke, I don't know why, but I just couldn't trust people and didn't trust anyone. Every individual who experiences these traumas in many cases feels highly isolated. Loneliness is really our most, one of our most dangerous mental health conditions. I spent years of my life just hiding in my apartment. I didn't have much of a desire to go out. I didn't think there was any reason worthy of, of leaving my apartment. Um, I had to struggle to find ways to get out of the house every day. When we're retraining the traumatized brain to begin to function in non-threatening environments, that individual has to really use a different part of the brain. And that different part of the brain also allows for a completely different chemical profile to influence that individual's functioning. Many of the things that have been continually endorsed have been the sense that they now have a new purpose. And now everybody loves Mac, but he's definitely my favorite. I just created a bond with him, and from that bond I created bonds with, with other horses and then, and then with other people at that point. It got me reconnected with people and introduced me to animals. It just started snowballing after that as far as making new friends and being able to actually go out and meet people places and not freak out. Every horse I've ever interacted with has start with a basic level of trust. It may not be much, but it grows. The positive side effect of the whole thing is that I've re-engaged with some people, and that's unusual. They're going to be a part of my life in some way um, for the remainder of it. Going through this with her has really shown us that Mia can do anything and to not count her out. To go on a ride with our daughter someday is a real possibility. This is my happy place.